The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Would you like something new for the new year? Well, then start the year right by getting acquainted with the latest addition to the Kraft family of fine cheese, K-Brand Natural Cheese. It's a mellow, delicious cheddar you're going to enjoy as a special treat in the coming year. Listen for more about K-Brand Cheese later. Now let's see what's going on in Summerfield. As water commissioner, the great Gildersleeve may not have been a ball of fire during the year, but on this last day of December, he's winding things up in a blaze of glory. Bessie? Bessie, you have those reports filed away? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Gildersleeve. And all those old letters you had in your desk, too. They took up two whole cabinets. Uh, Well, we don't mind a little work, Bessie. Just so we've cleared the desk for 48. Oh, we did. And I clearly marked both cabinets. That's good. Unfinished business of 1947. (laughs) But last year we only had one cabinet full of unfinished business left over. Business is getting better, isn't it, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, let's hope that's the explanation, Bessie. But it's all over for this year. Now we can relax. What time is it? Only 2 o'clock. Should I get my pad and pencil? Bessie, it's December 31st. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Oh, yes, sir. What? Gosh, I don't know. I guess you caught me in a fib, Mr. Gildersleeve. It, it means it's the last day of the year, Bessie. Let's close up the office. Besides, I have some arrangements to make for New Year's Eve. Oh, you mean all those parties, Mr. Gildersleeve? You certainly were invited to a lot of them. Well, yes, I was. <laughs> Uh, New Year's parties are such fun. When it's 12 o'clock, you say, Happy New Year, and then kiss everybody. Yes, you have the general idea, Bessie. Uh, Let's see, I'll stop in at Doris's at 9, Eve's at 9.30, pay a call on the Bagley sisters at 10, then be back at Doris's by 11. She invited me twice. (laughs) But you can't celebrate until midnight, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, they all have radios, Bessie. I'll find New Year's someplace. (laughs) I bet you could turn on that portable there and find they're celebrating right now in uh, Calcutta or someplace. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, do you really think so? Uh, I was only making a point, Bessie. (laughs) The time changes around the world. (laughs) Now run on home and have a happy new year. The office is closed. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Gildersleeve, you've been very nice to me this year. And well, you've been a pretty good secretary. I have, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. No, Bessie. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy new year. <laughs> Bessie, it's still early. It's Happy New Year in Calcutta. You said so. Yes. Happy New Year. Yes. <laughs> and the radio wasn't even on. Well, hello, PV. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeves. <laughs> What can I do for you this afternoon? Well, you might make me a little sandwich, Peavy. Just kind of tied me over. And a cup of coffee first. Hot. One hot cup of coffee coming up. Uh, been working, Mr. Gillespie? Yeah. Bessie and I just cleaned up a little unfinished business of 1947. Oh, I see. Care for a facial tissue to clean up a little more? Huh? <laughs> oh, thanks, Peavy. <laughs> Bessie was celebrating the New Year's Eve. Said I was a good employer to her all year, and... Uh, well, what's wrong with a little token of affection on New Year's? Besides, she kissed me. Yeah, good for Bessie. I don't imagine many women could have gotten away with it. <laughs> well, I won't have any trouble tonight, Peavy. I'm going to three parties. Three parties? You bet. I'm going to try and kiss every pretty girl in town. Mr. Gildersleeve, you don't suppose you're taking this atom bomb talk too seriously, do you? (laughs) It's New Year's Eve, Peavy. Time to ring out the old and ring in the new. How about you? You're not going to work tonight, are you? Oh, oh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mrs. Peavy likes to spend New Year's Eve at home. 
Uh, what kind of sandwich was that? Uh, make it a cheese on rye. Okay, brand natural on rye. Coming up. Good coffee this is, Peavy. Mm, thank you. Would you care for a little sliver of ham on the sandwich also? Mm, well, all right. New Year's Eve is quite an occasion with Mrs. Peavy. She always prepares something special for dinner and mayonnaise. Yeah, just a dab. Then we do the dishes and go into the living room and talk about things. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Peavy always likes to talk about things on New Year's Eve. Lettuce? Uh, well, yes. Long toward ten o'clock, we may play a game of cribbage. That kills an hour. You can't slip in a little slice of ox tongue, if you don't mind. Easy, Peavy. And then around eleven o'clock, we get out the horns and wait. <coughs> well, that sounds like a good way for you to greet the new year. I guess so, Mr. Gildersleeve. At least by twelve o'clock, I'm awfully glad to see it come. <laughs> Yes, but how about the sandwich? Oh, you care for this little pickle nub in it, too? Yeah, Peavy, how much is this, all this going to cost? Oh, no extra charge to you, Mr. Gildersleeve. At the end of the year, I have unfinished business to clean up back here, too. What? <laughs> how about a little turkey wing? Yeah, no thanks, Peavy. <laughs> just give me the cheese that I ordered in the beginning. And just as you say, Mr. Gildersleeve. I never will get rid of this darn stuff. There you are, cheese on rye. Thanks, Peavy. Hi, Commissioner. Pete, what's up? Well, hello, Floyd. Hi, Floyd. I was just going to come over and pay you a visit. Get shaved and trimmed up for tonight. Okay, I'm going back to the shop soon to make a purchase off the peeve. Guess I'd be going out among them tonight, too, if it wasn't for Lovey in bed with the cold. Well, well, not too bad, Floyd. Yeah, so I think I better stay home and look after her. She thinks so, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be making the rounds tonight. Private parties. Yeah, it's a good way to save money. But be careful, Kamish. They say more colds are caught from exposure to mistletoe than from wet feet. <laughs> Quite a lot of flu around, too. Yeah, don't worry about me. You two grandmothers stay home by the fire. I'll have my fun. Yeah, you lucky stiff. Give me a paper hat for lovey, Peeve. Once she won't knock off in bed. Very well, Floyd. And something for the cold? <laughs> Got an old Indian remedy, Peeve. One hot teaspoon to the patient, every two to the doctor, and happy new year to everybody. <laughs> How much is this hat? And all hats are a quarter, plus an extra penny. Oh, well, I'll take this one with the extra feather. There you are. Hey, the judge was in. Mentioned something about getting together at the Jolly Boys tonight, but I told him to count me out. You fellas, too, huh? The Jolly Boys? That would be Judge Hooker's idea. What a dull place to spend New Year's Eve. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. I can think of duller places. And perhaps the judge doesn't have any other place to go. Yeah, he's kind of alone in the world at that. I'd ask him over to our house, but I can't with Lovey on the blink. Well, he could come over and celebrate with Mrs. Peavy and me. Of course, I'd have to put out some feelers first. Hey. <laughs> Why don't you take him around with you tonight, Commish? Floyd! He don't have a happy home to stick to like the Peave and me. Just a housekeeper in four walls. Well, that's his concern. Well, you wouldn't want to be all alone on New Year's Eve, would you? Well, now, Floyd, He's I... really very fond of you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, you've known him longer than any of us. It's up to the judge to get invited to his own parties. He has to make his little contacts throughout the year like I do. Okay, Commissioner. That's the way you feel about it. On New Year's Eve? Well, I guess I'll get back to the shop. I'll be right over for that shave, Floyd. I may be busy. Yeah. Happy New Year, Peavy. Happy New Year, Floyd. Happy New Year, Floyd. Floyd, Happy New Year. Look, fellas, I'm not responsible for Hooker. The judge is a jolly boy, ain't he? But all for one, one for all. Like the song goes, should old acquaintance be forgot. All right, Floyd, all right, I'll take him along with me. Ye God. That's a spirit commission. Happy New Year. It's a very nice thing you're doing, Mr. Gildersleeve. Should old acquaintance... All right, Peavy, Happy New Year. <laughs> Wonder where I'll find the old goat. <laughs> A lot of fun I'll have with Hooker tagging along. The louder the party gets, the louder he talks. Say, there's Chief Gates. Maybe he's on duty tonight, and the judge can go down and play pinochle with him at the police station. Chief, wait! Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, Happy New Year. Yeah, thank you. Same to you, Chief. Have you heard about Judge Hooker? No. What happened? Well, nothing, but he's a fine fellow, Hooker. 
Well, a jolly boy, and all, huh? Of course. I've always been very fond of the judge. Chief, the old fellow was a little at loose ends this evening. And it being New Year's Eve and all... Oh, I... that's too bad. Come to think of it, the judge and I haven't played pinochle together for quite some time. Yeah. And I'd ask him over tonight, but I always drive over to Salinas on New Year's Eve to see my mother. Well, if you don't have time for a fellow jolly boy... But, Commissioner, I haven't missed a New Year's Eve with my mother in 20 years. That's all right. It's all right. I'll take him with me. <laughs> Looks as though I'm stuck with the old goat. Well, I'll tell him to get his glad rags out, and maybe I can ditch him before the evening's over. His honor isn't home. His honor? Oh, you mean the judge. Who'd you think I meant? <laughs> yeah, well, Mrs. Fogel, I'm Mr. Gildersleeve. Remember? Yes, I remember. Well, when do you expect the old uh, His Honor? He went walking in the park about an hour ago. Walking in the park? Don't you hear good? Uh, yes, I... What a housekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder Hooker's sad about staying home tonight. <laughs> going to spend all afternoon looking for him. Driven through the park twice. It, uh, uh, there he is. Walking with his back to the wind. Feeling sorry for himself. Horace! Horace! Well, Gilday, what brings you out in the park? Get in, Hooker, before you freeze. It is getting chilly, but I think I'll take one more turn around square. Get in, Hooker. You're too old to be romping around in the snow. I wasn't romping. I was thinking... Close the door and think inside. And have a tissue in the glove compartment. I have a handkerchief, thank you. <laughs> oh, brother. I've been looking all over for you, Horace. I wanted to extend a little invitation to you. Well, as I say, I've been out thinking. Thinking about the future. Oh? What about the future? That's just what I ask myself. I ask myself, what about the future? What a silly thing, Judge. Out in the cold park thinking. Who do you think you are, Bernard Baruch? Well, it's very well for you to say, Gildy. You have a warm family circle to talk things out with this evening. And I must say, I envy you. That's the real way to spend New Year's Eve. Uh, well... You see, I've been thinking about you too, Gildy. You have? Yes. And those two sweet children. How you must look forward to the joy of each New Year's Eve. Marjorie, curl at your feet, little Leroy in your lap. Yeah, but Judge, when did you see Leroy last? Oh, that's right. I was carried back, I guess, to the time when, as probate judge, I turned those little children over to you. My, but you were proud. Well, yes, I was. And although you've been fat-headed and stubborn at times, and a little negligent, I've never regretted doing it. Well, thanks, Judge. With each passing year, what a thrill it must be for you, a man whose life was once empty, like mine is. To hear them recite their accomplishments and then plan the course of the future and welcome the new year all together. One family, all for one and one for all. Now then, what is it you wanted to ask me, Gilly? Well, Floyd and Peavy told me you were at loose ends tonight, and I was wondering... Uh, yeah? ...if you'd uh, care to spend New Year's Eve with me. Where, Gilly? At home? With you and the children? At home? Mm, well, yes... In the bosom of my little family. Gildy, old friend, I'd be honored and delighted. I was afraid you would, you old goat. <laughs> what? Uh, nothing, Horace. Said you got a beautiful coat. <laughs> well, at least I kissed Bessie Happy New Year way back in Calcutta. <laughs> It won't be long before horns will blow, bells will ring, and folks will gather around to sing out Old Lang Syne. Yes, in just a few hours, folks in big towns and little towns will welcome a bright and shining new year. As the last of the bells ring out, every hostess thoughts will swing quickly from good wishes for the new year to the kitchen and the midnight lunch. If you've guessed tonight, I hope you've included plenty of K-brand natural cheese in your late lunch. K-Brand is Kraft's modern cheese masterpiece, a delicious natural cheddar with a mellow, rich flavor, the tender texture that real cheese experts love. But 
This natural cheddar is made of pasteurized milk. You mean a natural cheese made of pasteurized milk? K-Brand natural is. And furthermore, K-Brand cheese has no rind because it ages right in its own spick and span wrapper. Then all of K-Brand cheddar can be used? That's right. Every mellow bit of this natural cheese can be used for hearty sandwiches, for snacks, with pie. If you haven't already tried K-Brand Natural, you're in for a pleasant surprise in 48. The next time you shop, have your dealer cut you a portion from the big wrapped bar with the words K-Brand Natural marked down the top and sides. But get a good big portion for your family's going to have a new cheese favorite in 48. K-Brand, the natural cheddar made of pasteurized milk. <laughs> Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. He's generously given up invitations to spend New Year's Eve with his favorite girlfriends in order to cheer the lonely life of his old friend Judge Hooker. And the sacrifice has brought new gladness to his heart. Ah, beautiful snowfall. When it's springtime in the Rockies, I'll be coming back to... Uh Uh-oh. There's that garden hose I forgot to put away last fall. (laughs) Better disconnect it and store it right now. Might freeze again tonight. (laughs) Already frozen. (laughs) Oh, well, I'll be the first man on the block to have my garden hose out next spring. (laughs) There's Leroy going around the house. Let me get some of this nice, soft snow. I'll sneak up behind him and let him have it. <laughs> Captain Timothy Gildersleeve of the Royal Mounted. Always gets his man. I'll just peek around the corner. Where'd that kid go? Hey, look out behind you! Huh? Oh! Mm. <laughs> it didn't hurt much, did it, huh? What's the idea, sneaking up on me from behind? Put on those snowballs. Suppose you've broken something. My watch. You don't carry it in your hip pocket, do you, Unc? Put down those snowballs. Okay, you put down yours. You march in the house, young man, and take that sled off the steps. Oh, for corn's sake. Leroy, look out behind you. Huh? Ah, oh, this way. Gee. Leroy, that's not what you did. You just wait till I tell Mr. Gilsleeve. <laughs> he knows it. Hello, Bertie. <laughs> oh, I didn't see you, Mr. Gilsleeve. I'll have it fixed first thing after New Year's, Bertie. Just pull the shade down for now. Leroy stuffed some paper in that window. I didn't break it. Well, you were the one who ducked. (laughs) Paper will keep out the wind and the snow. We'll all be cozy here in the living room tonight. Who'll be cozy? I thought we were all stepping out tonight, New Year's Eve. No, Bertie. We'll greet the New Year right here at home. I've invited Judge Hooker over for dinner. The judge? Okay. So put the little pot in the big pot. (laughs) Company. Okay, Mr. Gilsey. Then I'd better get going. Big night tonight. Oh. Bertie, will you please press this blouse for me? I want to wear it tonight. Hello, Uncle Marge. Hello, my dear. Okay, Miss Marjorie, but I got things to do. The judge likes your cinnamon rolls, Bertie, if they aren't too much trouble. Okay. Uh, do the blouse first, please, Bertie. Okay. Don't forget to bake the rolls, Bertie. Okay, okay, okay. Judge coming over, cook the dinner, press the blouse, bake the rolls, and me with a coal and a big party to go to. What we need around here is a two-day New Year's Eve. <laughs> What's this about dinner, Ronky? Uh, I've invited the judge over, Marjorie, to spend a quiet evening with us. Quiet? Who wants to be quiet on New Year's? I'm going out. Thought you were going out, too. Yeah, Unc, you always whoop it up on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Never mind. I was going out, but the holiday season is the time to be unselfish and think about others. Isn't that what we did when we gave away all those good presents? Yeah. <clears throat> this is different, young man. This is New Year's, and Judge Hooker is all alone in the world. Is that any reason for sitting up with him all night? <laughs> now, Marjorie, if you could have seen him this afternoon, wandering through the park in the snow... A lonely, forgotten old man, wearing a cape. You wouldn't begrudge him a few happy hours with us. I've given up a pleasant evening myself. By George, we'll make the sacrifice. Can I sit up and see the old year out, Unc? Well, this is a special occasion. Why not? More the merrier. Oh, boy. Unky, this isn't fair. I wanted to have fun tonight. Marge, we will all start the new year right by doing as I say. But, Uncle Mort, I have a date. The whole gang is going over to Francie. Well, stay with us till the judge falls asleep, my dear, and then you can leave. (laughs) Yes, sir, Hooker was right. Nothing like a happy new year in the bosom of the little family. Leroy, 
I open the door a little bit. Getting stuffy in here. Okay. Why not pull out the paper I stuffed in the window? The door, Leroy. <laughs> you a comfortable judge? Perfectly, Gilda. This is an extremely joyous occasion to me. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Yes, yes. That was the most excellent dinner Bertie prepared. I must say I envy you in more ways than one, Gildy. You're lucky having a cook like Bertie. Well, you got Mrs. Fogel. Yes, I have. <laughs> Marjorie, you're unusually quiet this evening. I don't mean to be, Judge. I was just thinking. Well, there's no more fitting time for communion with oneself than at the close of a year. Not many girls your age are spending New Year's Eve in quiet reflection, I imagine. I imagine not. Uh, uh, it's only 11 o'clock. Turn on the radio, Leroy. Let's hear a celebration somewhere. Huh? Oh, boy, now we'll pep up the party a little. Well, I think it's a very peppery party. And as I said before... Don't say it again, Judge. Please, listen to the radio. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the biggest, loudest, zaniest New Year's celebration this city has seen in a decade. Just listen to the crowd. Oh, boy, where is it? As the clock struck 12, it seemed that every boy here was kissing his girl. I wonder what Doris and Eve were doing. What did you say, Al? Never mind, Leroy. What did you say? Turn it off. Oh, for corn's sake. I think I'll go upstairs and listen to my room. Now, Leroy, we're all staying up with the judge. Yeah, but what's there to do? You know, it just occurred to me, Gildy, I wish I'd thought of it before. It would have been just the thing for this evening. Oh, what's that, Judge? I missed a golden opportunity. Why didn't I think to bring my stereoscope with the slides of Yellowstone National Park? <laughs> oh, those. Yeah. Oh, brother. <laughs> The children always enjoyed them, Gilda. Uh, yes. Well, under the circumstances, why don't we just sit and talk? What do we talk about? Now, Marjorie, you should be able to think of something. Why don't you open the conversation? Me? Yes, Marjorie. What's happening in the younger set? Well, they're having a party right now. <laughs> Would anyone care for some hot chocolate? I just made a pot. Yeah, a little early for that, isn't it, Bertie? Not for me. Yeah, we'll get to you, young man. Judge, how about you? Not for me yet, Bertie. I'm still full from your delightful dinner. Thanks, just the same. None for me, Bertie, thanks. Uh, Marjorie? I may as well. But, Uncle, it's getting awfully late. Yeah, well, drink your chocolate, and then you may go. It's cold out. I'll leave the pot here for whoever wants it. I'm off to my party. I don't mind missing some of the buildup, but I don't want to miss none of that ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Bertie, what about our sandwiches? Mr. Gillsleeve, when you open the refrigerator door at midnight, there they'll be. Oh? Uh? Happy New Year, everybody. Hey, Happy hey, New Year, everybody. Hey, hey, my, that chocolate smells good. I might just have some of that. Will you pour, Marjorie? All right, Judge. There's nothing like spending New Year's Eve in the bosom of a family, Gildy. Uh -huh. You've no idea how glad I am that I turned down those other parties in favor of yours. What's this, Judge? What other parties? You know, the usual round of gay things. Doris Dalrymple's, Miss Goodwin's, Marriter Williger's. What? I even got an invitation from the Bagley sisters. <laughs> you mean you kept me home and you could have gone to all those other parties? Yes, but New Year's Eve is the time to be close to your bosom friends. Don't you think so, old friend? You bet, and I'm going out and say Happy New Year to some of them right now. But, Gilda... See you next year, bosom friend. <laughs> Twelve. Still time to wish Doris Dalrymple a happy new year. Maybe Eve, too. <laughs> hey, somebody's having a party over Floyd's Barbershop. The Jolly Boys Club. Now, who'd be up there? <laughs> That'll only take a minute to find out. With a blue ribbon on it, it's old album to the shade. And through the fields of clover, we ride on. Our golden wedding day. Golden wedding day. Well, Floyd. Well, Chief, what goes on here? Well, it isn't Commissioner Gildersleeve. I have missed you just in time. Floyd, I thought Lovey was sick. Well, I had to step out to get us some cough syrup. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you jolly boys were all staying home tonight. You're a fine bunch of hypocrites. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Peavy, you old rascal, how'd you get away from Mrs. Peavy? 
Well, it seems Mrs. Peavy is a little behind the times. Huh? She thinks New Year's Eve is tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. How long have you guys been here? Chief, you always spend New Year's with your mother in Salinas. I do, Mr. Gildersleeve, but tonight the blizzard blocked the road. First New Year's I've missed spending with my mother in 20 years. That's tough, Chief. Hey, come here. Come on over to the corner and have a Coke. Coke? Well, just one. Maybe I'll have another one with you. New Year's Eve. Uh-huh. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Hey, gang, it's the judge. Judge, you're like a bad penny. How'd you find me? That was easy, Gildy. After I put Leroy to bed, I followed some peculiar tracks in the snow. Nobody else walks like a steamroller. <laughs> Why, you old goat? I'm glad you left so I could. I was never so bored in all my life. Now, see here, Hooker. Yes. Fellas, fellas, it's New Year's Eve. Uh, We're all jolly boys. Yeah. Hey, listen, it's midnight. Let's have a song. Till old acquaintance be forgot. Well, not a bad idea. I give the old friend. Great idea, Judge. Old friend. Catch yeah. it as it comes by. Let's go out with girls. When your hearts and doors are open wide to celebrate the new year, I hope you've planned a cheese tray for your guests. It's such a warm and friendly way to say welcome. Now, we hope you've seen to it that your cheese tray offers K-Brand cheese. You see, K-Brand is a natural cheddar with a mellow, rich flavor that's simply wonderful eating. And it's made from pasteurized milk. That's right, a natural cheese made from carefully pasteurized milk. K-Brand cheese ages right in its own spick-and-span wrapper. It has no rind, so every bit of its rich goodness is usable for holiday good eating. The next time you shop, have your dealer cut a portion for you from the big wrapped bar with the words K-Brand Natural marked down the top and sides. Remember, this is the natural cheddar made of pasteurized milk. Remember, K-Brand Natural Cheese. Uh, thanks for bringing me home, Judge. Not at all, Gildy. Happy New Year. Yeah, happy New Year, Horace. Uh, yeah. Fine fellow, Horace. Yes, sir. I always like him better when I hear how badly he sings. <laughs> hey, George, nothing like spending an evening with the Jolly Boys. Well, I see Marjorie's home. Light on in the window. There's the one I broke. Well, I'll fix it in the morning. Start the New Year right. Keep things warm and snug for the little family. Yes, sir, and ours will be a harmonious little household. I'll be a better uncle in 1948. Not speak a crossword to Leroy. I told Leroy to move that sled off his porch. Leroy! You called me a Well, Happy New Year, my boy. Go back to bed. What the heck? Can't ball a little fellow out first day of 1948. <laughs> uh, folks, before I go in, I'd like to wish the best New Year ever to all of you from all of us. Marjorie, Little Leroy, Bertie, and all the rest of your, our friends here in Summerfield. Tonight's writers, John Elliott and Andy White, our other writing team, Gene Stone and Jack Robinson, our musical director, Jack Meekin, and our dialogue director, Fran Van Hartesfeld, wish you the same. And from our sponsor, the Kraft Foods Company, a very special wish for your health and happiness in 1948. Good night. I'm bushed. No, you're not. You're Harold Perry. <laughs> Happy New Year. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.